Hi everyone, you're listening to the Paranormal Cast of William Field and Sally Morgan. We've got an interesting show ahead of us. We've got Sally's latest discovery of the gay demon phenomenon, which is, um, has to be seen to be believed. Um, we're also looking back into the backstory of Sally Morgan and her first encounters with anything paranormal. Um, and she's, she's full of ghost stories, it's going to be a great show. Um, and we'll be looking forward um, at our two huge events coming up in the very early part of 2013, the return to the George Vault in Rochester, and of course our epic Pluckley Seance, which is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm Lee Enfield. And I'm Sally Morgan. So Sally, please do tell us all about your demon. The gay demon. Um, this was found on Facebook today when my friends decided it'd be good to share this and it is um, about a man being possessed by a gay demon Mm -hmm. so as far as I can work out from the video we watched earlier on you have to see this to believe I will admit Um, it's a video on YouTube of a man Um, searching on YouTube for just gay demon will bring it up as one of the the first results if not the first result Yeah, you're looking for a guy who looks slightly mortified um, as a religious man, I don't want to call him a vicar. I don't know what's he going to be. Uh, he's an evangelist of some kind. I think that's fair to say. One of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, he's talking to a guy who's uh, ha- who's done homosexual acts, um, and the reason for this, so says the evangelist, is due to a demon possessing him, a gay demon named anger possessing him. And the video is basically the evangelist trying to get him to repeat words. It's almost like a really bad marriage ceremony, in all, in, in all honesty. Um, trying to get him to repeat words, saying, Oh, if you don't say it, I'll bring those women back. Do you want me to bring those women back? With the demon going, no, and roaring quite a lot. It makes a lot of growly noises. Yeah, there's a lot of, ah, noises. It's, um, yeah, definitely really good acting, I think. <laughs> Um, and in the end, the guy um, like it gets quite emotional, as it were, and quite powerful. Blah, blah, blah. Don't give me that look. <laughs> I'm not giving you any look at all. Um, yeah, and towards the end, um, everyone in the audience that's there raises one hand or both hands into the air, because that's how you call down God, I think, according to this video. Um, and the man who was a homosexual, who is no longer due to the demon leaving, uh, collapses on the floor. And it's all like, oh, I didn't mean to do it. Oh, the demon made me. Okay. Um, right. Um, I just want it noted that I'm not being rude about Christians here. It's got nothing to do with religion. As bad as it may sound, it's got nothing to do with religion, what I'm mm-hmm. saying here. What I'm saying is this is the most retarded thing I've ever heard about what a demon would do. Okay. Yeah, it's... It's one of those moments where, I, I, as, as always, we try and kind of approach every, every piece of news that comes our way, we do try and approach open-minded, even if it is a haunted toaster. But it is one of those, you just watch it, you're like, there are people actually buying into this. It's, oh, yeah, it's he's got terrifying. an audience of, like, 50, 60, 70 people. Yeah. Like, and they're, you know, they're it's the whole, it. oh, they got their hands up in the air, you can see some of them shaking, and they're wobbling around, they're really, like, yeah. they're taken by this. Um, and you know, the guy who's apparently possessed, I mean, it gets, you know, he is growling and he is like, his face is contorting when he's doing it all. And Mm -hmm. he genuinely, if it wasn't maybe the fact that they're saying it's a gay demon, I might actually buy the fact that he was being possessed by something. I mean, we are finding it hard to buy into demons being the driving force behind homosexuality. Yeah, we all know it's because guys want bomb. Okay. That's the driving force. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, it's it's just very... It honestly sounds to me like this guy's gone crap. Yeah. I'm gay, you know, and maybe he's like he's a Christian or something, a very strict Christian by the sounds of it, or very much into the whole, it's very wrong. It's gone, mm. I've done it, what do I do now? And okay. this guy's gone, I've got an idea. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this will work. And you kind of expect like a Rocky montage happening, practicing, getting ready for this moment when they go in front of the camera and depossess him. Exorcise. That's the teddy bear. <laughs> I'm tired. It's, it's, it's a weird experience to, to watch it because it is terrifying the idea of no people who actually are buying into this. Firstly, the, yeah, firstly it's tragic for... Uh, the guy involved obviously feels such guilt about but let's be honest he feels such guilt about being gay 
But the only way he can rationalise it to himself is, oh, it must have been the demon, which is kind of sad. Yeah, but then the fact that someone has come along and gone, no, that is right, that is what is going on here. We'll get rid of that for you. Yeah. That's even worse, I think. It's just very... Quite creepy. I mean, I'm not saying demons don't possess people. I believe they can and they do. Mm -hmm. To possess someone to make them have sex with another man, that's pushing it for me. Okay, you don't think... I believe the haunted toaster more than this story. I think demons have better things to do. Yeah. There's got to be... There's got to be great... Let's be honest, there's got to be great tracks of evil than homosexuality. Even even if you are listening to this one of the most right wing Bible bashers you can possibly be, there are worse crimes than homosexuality. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you but, could eat like meat on a Friday. Yeah, or where fabric made of more than uh, made made of more than. Three how were your taxes down in the Channel Islands? Mm, don't and there's right. lots of really really bad things you could do, but it it uh, it just it's just overarching sadness was all like I was just feeling sorry for this guy who's. So unable to accept who he is, but he feels he's got to externalise that as a demonic force, mm. which is just it's just so sad, really. Um, and then, as you say, for these vultures to be hanging around him and profiteering off of that is it's pretty even sad. Worse, yeah, um, it's medieval, really. The way it's done, definitely. It's um, I mean, this guy and I, I felt bad. I did actually laugh and this. The, main, the actual religious guy is trying to make him say, you know, I will leave this body, blah, blah, blah. Um, he's growling, he refuses to. One of the things they says, do you want me to bring those women back? To which the guy actually looks like he's going to cry when yeah, he's well, told we, that. The, the video starts after the women have left. We don't know who the women were. Yeah. It may have been the crazy nun from Blues Brothers coming back and hitting him with a stick. Could have been that really fat woman always, you know. There's, yeah. there's always that one fat woman that... Yeah. They just lurk around places, haven't they? Yeah, it could have been Mo Molan, you know. Mm. There's always, you know, it, it could have been Lindsay Lohan. It could be even more terrifying. <laughs> Do you want me to bring her back? No! Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> be amazing. Yeah. So, yes, that is our fantastic news yeah. story of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a strange one. There is a bigger story. That I've, you know, normally, I don't introduce these halfway through the show, but it has only it just come back to mind for some reason. Have you heard about Wayne Hoochin? No. Wayne Hoochin is a, a I don't know him personally, but I have friends are friends with him. He's um, uh, Wayne Hoochin. His name is, and uh, he was doing a TV spot in the Dominican Republic, just just a standard Parkinson, um, Jonathan Ross type chat show, mm. and um, the TV host thought he was a demon, poured lighter fluid over his head and set him on fire on TV. Uh, Wayne's in hospital at the moment with quite severe burns like his head and his own. He's recovering, but he's quite badly burned to his head and hands. And because um, this guy from this Dominican Republican TV presenter thought he was a witch doctor and was trying to kill him. Fucking hell. Which is, you know, what century are we living in where we have to put up with... Um, firstly, this kind of you know, criminal attack on religious grounds, and then this homophobia on religious grounds. And really, can we move on beyond this kind of Matthew Hopkins bullshit? Yeah, it's getting me down a bit. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I would. I would say YouTube, but it's not pleasant to watch. So I recommend you don't. Just take my it's word for it. Really, like, it's. It's not the fact it's the religious. It is it's the fact that they kind of resort to. Um, paranormal but not even as a kind of saviour it's that they're trying to reason if they, it's like they've kind of given up with going oh no this is a logical reason they're going nope demons did it now yep. nope it, you're, you're bewitched like no <laughs> no ghosts it's... and supernatural and the paranormal that that's not what mm. it's all about I'm yeah. not being funny you die tomorrow your first thought isn't I'm going to go make another guy bum someone. Yeah. That is not your first thought. No, there's uh, there's something about... I don't like the paranormal cast getting too heavy, but it is a bugbear of mine that people use religious excuses to be dickheads. And it's not any particular faith, and it's not any particular denomination, but because I see it in Christians, I, I see it in Islam, I see it in mediums, I see it in mediums a lot, I see it in atheists, um, where... Their belief clouds them to such an extent that they forget to be a nice person. Yeah. 
Mm. And that's above all, I think. Um, yeah, okay, believe what you want as long as it's making you a better person, but the instant you're forgetting to be a better person and a nice person because life's too short and you've got to be one of the good guys, there's the moment you start putting your beliefs above making the world a better place and being a better person, then that's when you need to stop and rethink what you're doing. No, I completely agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I hate the paranormal cast to get heavy like that, but this, you know, this, this flagrant homophobia and this vicious attack on Wayne, all this kind of bull crap, it needs to end, really. Um, and, yeah, that, that's, that's just where I stand, and I hope more and more people agree with me. <laughs> no one ever agrees with you, Renfield. Okay, we're moving on now to something a bit lighter, which is um, Sally Morgan. Our, my lovable co-host <laughs> for all our live events and all our radio shows and our frequent horror movie nights where I try and educate her to some degree or another. Same podcast? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Seen 13 Geist as well. Good film, actually. I'd suggest... Mm, I'd that's all right. The original's better. The, yeah. <laughs> it's not saying a lot, I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're getting better. I mean, we've got you to see The Exorcist. We've got you to see Witchfinder General. Yep. We've got, you, got you to see Zombie Flesh Eaters. Haven't, done, e- haven't done Evil Dead yet. Nope. Haven't done no. Cannibal Holocaust. Haven't done Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Holocaust yet. You're, you're not ready for Cannibal Holocaust yet. I, think I don't think I'm nice. ready for Cannibal Holocaust again. <laughs> Man, there's a film you never forget. Viewers, listeners, whatever you want to call yourselves, don't. Just don't. It's just don't. You've not seen it. I know what it's about. It. I've seen the pictures. I own it. I've read the plot. On oh, Blu-ray. <laughs> What do you fucking do? I wanted it in 1080p, that's how depraved I am. Oh, you nerd. Yeah. Love it. Better than that Stargate Wars thing you watch. <laughs> anyway. Meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, you... What kind of kicked you off into interesting ghosts and interest in the paranormal? Um, I... The main thing that I can remember was being about... Six or seven years old mm-hmm. in my old house. Yes, I know. That was like last week. I know. Um, You're getting older. It's okay. Gee, thanks. Yeah. Um, you got a while to catch up on me, haven't you? About 100 years or so. <laughs> 100. 160 by my reckoning, but yeah. Oh, yeah. that's all right then. Um, yeah, my old house. Um, it's something that always stuck out with me, um, and it was the first thing I can truly remember being like a paranormal experience in this house. Um, when we moved in, my parents were told, you see, not me, who tells six year olds kind of stuff, that the woman who was renting it to us, um, her grandmother was called Flory, and she died in this house. Mm-hmm. Good thing to tell someone once once they've agreed to rent the house off you, good yeah. idea. Um, and we were told, um, we were told things about her after this. Um, all we knew was that someone had died in the house. I wasn't aware of that at the time. Um, the first thing I can remember is there was um, an old mantelpiece clock. Um, didn't work, it was a set at like something like three minutes past the hour, something ridiculous like that. And if you ever put takeaway food in front of it, it would chime and it would get louder and louder until you took the takeaway food away. We discovered this on our first day where we were kind of moving things around so we went, to, went and grabbed McDonald's, you know, mm-hmm. don't really have time to make a full meal. Put it down, it started chiming. That's a bit weird. We had the food anyway and it stopped. Okay, mm-hmm. so we did a bit of an experiment, put it back and it started chiming again. And if you ever put food, and it was in the dining room, so it was quite hard not to sometimes. You put yeah. food down, it start chiming louder and louder. That's very strange. Very strange. The thing that we found out um, once everything had happened, once we told the woman, was that her nan never bought um, fast food, ever. She, If she could make everything she would, she would plant all her own uh, fruit and veg, she would like buy only ingredients. She would make all of her food, and she despised the idea of buying freshly made food or fresh made food from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and that clock was her favourite thing in the house. So it was kind of a um, finding that out afterwards was quite a creepy little thing. Yeah. Um, it was also in the lounge every night um, from about eight o'clock ish. You could smell uh, wood burning. Mm-hmm. At first we thought it was our neighbour, you know, all the houses have chimneys, so we presumed mm. it was maybe the neighbours. Um, there was no one in the house next to us. Okay. And it turns out that Flory and her husband, every night about 8 o'clock, would turn their fire on, or would put their fire on. So, 
That's mm -hmm. really creepy. She said you're about six, six or seven. So this is well, late mid nineties, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's um, at this point she'd been dead apparently about ten, twenty years. Okay. So kind of a fresh spirit, I guess. Mm hmm. Um, and the one that always stuck out with me and still gives me nightmares. I know I'm Scooby Doo. Um, I used to have about 20 or 30 teddy bears at the end of my bed. Because I was good like that, little girl. <laughs> um, there was one in particular, and it looked like um, someone had basically pulled it up on one side of my bed, so it stood up. And, like, you know, adults kind of jiggle toys around to make it look like they're dancing to babies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did that across my bed. Okay. And hovered at the end and fell off. Um, which point absolutely scared the crap out of me because I looked at the end of my bed where it was and just saw two eyes staring at me. The human eyes? Yeah, looking. basically floating at the end of my bed. But they, were, they weren't just like glowing eyes you could see it white like people eyes. and iris. It was um, basically like if someone was wearing like a green mask. Like, you know, when you do these uh, like Photoshop basically. Yeah, okay. And all the deaths was But you, eyes. it was like you could see, it wasn't Real just eyes. glowing red eyes. No, no, that. no it, it was, was actual eyes. You could see white iris right. and people. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, which led me to scream my head off and run downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, and we moved out of the house about three months later, as far as I remember. Okay. Um, we'd normally find cheese in the cutlery drawer, and our forks where the cheese would be. Um, we had my own mum had Titanic on video. The case and the video went missing for about six months. Then we found the case, and we never found the video again. Mm -hmm. um, you always got the feeling that there was someone in the room watching you like stood in the corner of the like at the mm -hmm. door um you could normally hear like moving around at night just like shuffling around putting things where they should and that's when normally you get really tidying fight. up noises yeah. yeah like a nan would mm -hmm. um it was absolutely petrifying and how long did you live there for we must have lived there for about a year altogether in yeah, the end yeah okay um but it's like little things that at the time didn't really scare me, just kind of a, that's weird. You know? Yeah, that's what it often is. But looking back now, like now I can actually feel myself shaking and I'm getting yeah. scared remembering it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure some more stuff happened, but my parents have never really talked about it. Like, I know those things because they happened to me, they happened to yeah. my parents in front of me. Um, and I just remember snippets of conversation that I've, in like past years, actually mm -hmm. asked them about to make sure. I wasn't just remembering things. Um, but, yeah, it was because of that I kind of mm -hmm. got interested in ghosts. And then about three years later, um, when we moved, um, I looked out my bedroom door to see the shadow. It was like a 3D shadow of a little mm -hmm. Victorian boy stood at my door who just vanished. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, you know, I wondering if maybe it was my parents that I saw half awake. No, they didn't. They went outside my room all night. They were in bed all night. So... Mm -hmm. That was um, really creepy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, we got um, you know a lot of stuff happening in that first house. Um, I'd love to go back and visit, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm scared too. I would never go back there. Um, mm -hmm. It's because that house. I know if I'm upstairs, I hate being upstairs on my own in any house. Mm -hmm. I'll run downstairs, turn all the lights off, and hide if I have to. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's um, it stayed with me like mm -hmm. fifteen. 20 years now. So, yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's really cool. No, you're kind of lucky in a way. Not many people can say they've had those kind of experiences. Though, like you say, it's never... I find um, ghosts and spirits are never actually scary at the time. I very rarely... Uh, I mean, if I'm in uh, a seance or a ghost hunt situation and I see or I pick up on something, then that's different. I'm kind of waiting for that, and that's yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, there is something there. Mm. Or, or that wasn't unexpected. That, well, that wasn't unexpected. It's kind yeah. of the, the vibe I get. Um, uh, like when we did the George Vault, when we had that strange white oh, form of pouring in the middle of the vigil, and that was... But that wasn't terrifying, because it wasn't like you were surprised. It was like, well, we are here for this. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, that's not unexpected. Uh, when I've been what you would, I suppose, call surprised by ghosts, like um, when I've been driving my car and I've one run in front of my car, or I saw one uh, when, I, when I was just on a, a tourist trap visit to Dover Castle, and uh, I never get scared at the time. It's always just a, huh, that's odd. And it isn't until later I go, hmm, I think I might have been a ghost, you know. Yeah. It catches up with me later. Um, 
Have you heard about the Bluebell Ghost? Uh, Bluebell Hill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, there's a lady who appears on Bluebell Hill. She asks for a lift um, to an address. Mm -hmm. And when you get there with her, she's gone. She's um, one of the most commonly reported, of what, what are generally called phantom hitchhiker yeah. ghosts. They're very often, um, they appear, they get in the car, and then they're not there when they, yeah. they pull up with various degrees of embellishment, depending on who tells the story. Yeah. But Bluebell Hill's got more ghosts than just that. Um, the reason I mention it is because my dad's friend picked her up. Oh, OK. Um, not quite sure why, but um, he was talking to her the whole way home, which mm -hmm. uh, he said... Looking back now, we can't actually remember if she was answering or if it was just kind of uh, doing it to yeah. not be creeped out. He got there. She wasn't in the car. Mm -hmm. um, so he went out and knocked on the door anyway and, and explained the situation to a woman who broke down in tears and said that was her daughter who died a few years back on Bluebell Hill. Okay. And she gets people doing this, I think it's like every few months. Yeah, so. I've, I've heard that, um, a story like that before. So she, she should move, really. Yeah. It, yeah, you would have thought you'd move by that point, but at the same time, it was like, oh, that's Ooh, horrible. So, yeah. yeah. What do you do then? Try and get travel expenses? Thing is, what? How would you? I personally don't know how I'd react to that. Like, yeah, I mean, ghosts are very rarely um, the kind of traditional cartoony white sheet version. I don't think I've ever seen one like that for sure. Oh, well, no. uh, whenever I've seen them, they've been. Uh, real, they've been like a person's been in the room with me, like a solid 3D yeah. person. Um, or I see even a shadow formed, very uh, with the exception of that blob in the George Vaults, very, very rare. So it's very rare for them to actually be like the, the traditional white ghost in chains mm -hmm. looking thing. I mean, I've certainly never seen one uh, looking like that kind of caricature. Mm -hmm. um, they're either, or they are solid, they are real, or they're. they're black shadow like you say you saw the uh, Victorian boy is kind of like a freestanding shadow yeah. um, I've always said the, the majority of times I've seen them they have been like a freestanding shadow yeah. and uh, when they um, when they dissolve people often say oh the ghost then disappeared uh, when I see them disappear it's almost like when you burn your retina from looking at a bright light too hard the way the yeah. burn mark dissolves but snap down to like a fraction of a yeah. second. But it's, it's that kind of fade in and those, dissolve. Uh, if I don't think about it, I can remember how it happened. As soon as I try and focus on how it happened, I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But I do find it weird how, if you're expecting it, it scares you. It genuinely scares you that you find something. When you're not expecting a ghost, if you're not expecting anything it's weird to happen, it happens, and then you're like, oh, you're more shocked. You don't get scared. And then afterwards, like you said, you go, that was a ghost. Yeah. Or, um, you know, it's, you might try and work out what it is. It's when you can't work out, you get a shiver. Yeah. That shiver Something is horrible. I've always been curious about, as I've always said, you know, with a few rare exceptions, the most of the way I see a ghost is as the black freestanding shadow, 3D shadow, mm. is the way I described it. That's how my dad sees them as well. And I'm oh, wondering okay. if how you actually perceive ghosts can be hereditary. That's always interested me, is because the people who do see them as fully 3D formed figures... Is that hereditary? People who don't pick them up on at all, is that hereditary? That's just something that's always in, I've always wondered. Um, it's possible. I mean, they reckon that until you're five years old, you can pretty much, you see like ghosts as like normal people kind of mm -hmm. thing. It's around the age of five that your body kind of goes either, I can or I can't see them. Um, but then again, it's, it, it might be more of a um, nature versus nurture. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're around a family that's very open, as I've always been, my parents have always been kind of, yes, there are ghosts, yes, there is something else. Mm -hmm. I've been allowed to kind of go with that. Yeah. Most if I've been brought up in a house where, no, this is how it is, blah, 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 I wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. But then again, maybe they are open because they see them. It's kind of a... Yeah. I'm not too sure. I mean, I think it might be. I mean, you see them how your dad sees them, mm -hmm. which says to me there's got to be something there genetically. Yeah. Um, I just so sorry. I've always been, been curious about mm -hmm. Of that, or you're adopted, and it's a really good coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just got the go ahead. We're doing an absolutely awesome event coming up on the first of February. In uh, we are doing one of our ghost hunt seance events, and we're doing it in the Black Horse in Pluckley. Which uh, Scooby, are you all right? <laughs> um, the Black Horse <laughs> yeah, is home to a poltergeist, but not only that, Pluckley um, is, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, the most haunted village in Britain, and we're going to be going there. Hey, we're going to be going there at night. How did you get hey. into this game, being so scared of everything? Like I've said before, and I stick by it, the ghost was to sit down and go, 
I'm a ghost, do you fancy a cuppa? Fancy a chat? I'd be fine. Okay. That's not what they do, so I have a very big problem. Okay. <laughs> um, if you've never been, do not ask Alice or one of our ghost hunts, because you're worried you might be scared, the great thing about having Sally with us is you will never be the most scared person on the trip. Sally will always be more scared of everything than you are. That's that's like our that's our company guarantee almost. Don't worry, you won't be the most petrified, scared to cat there. That's that Sally's job. Always as your apprentice. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not how you should be when you do sales. It's yeah. ta da. Oh, she just gets she's hilarious. Um. I'll yeah, so we're going to be doing uh, Pluckley, which is uh, tickets of that go on sale uh, later this week. I think Friday they finally go on sale. They'll be available from leemfieldentertainment.com and we got tickets.com slash leemfield. Yay! Um, there will be, it's going to be a full evening. It's going to uh, be dinner. Um, we'll, we'll be there as well. Um, uh, kind of talk about uh, Pluckley as the most haunted village in Britain and run down all the ghosts in history there. you got your hands up. I have got my hand up. What's up? Can we have toast? You want toast? <laughs> <laughs> After the haunted toaster? Yes, I know you want a haunted toaster. I don't want a haunted toaster. I want toast from a haunted toaster. You want toast toaster. from a haunted toaster. Yep. Okay, fine. Cool. Um, it'll be dinner. It'll be uh, us giving a quick talk about me, the ghosts, and there will be um, an investigation, a look around the pub. Um, glass moving sessions, full blackout sounds. It's going to go on till about one o'clock, one thirty in the morning. It's going to be an absolutely full on uh, dinner and sounds and ghost hunt. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, tickets for that will be forty pounds each, including dinner. Um, so it's going to be uh, absolutely brilliant night out if you come down because you know it's us, it's Black Horse, and it's the most haunted village in Britain, which. I'm excited about it. Don't forget, if you don't think you're a pussy and you really want to put yourself up to the challenge, there are also it's the inn, isn't it, that has rooms that you can rent for the night. Um, uh, they certainly used to. I'll, I'll look into. I'll, I'll find out. There. I'll find that out in time yeah. in time for next week, or I'll, or I'll put it on the website. They so might have rooms. Yeah, you can see. You know. Yeah. Competition um, time for anyone coming <laughs> along. See how much the man secret you room. Are. Yeah. We'll. Um, I'll look into that. That's a really good point. I haven't thought about. We'll. Uh, we'll look into. I'll check room availability for anyone who is interested. Um, but before then, on uh, Tuesday the twenty ninth of January, we're back in the George Vault again, which was so. Which we did on October thirtieth this year, and um, it was amazing. It, it was, was absolutely fantastic, and I wasn't that scared. You were quite scared for most of it. I didn't shriek. No, that was. No, you weren't one of the screamers, that's no. true. I did shake a lot, and I feel yeah. really sorry for the audience member next to me when I was holding hands, because I don't think you had much of a hand left by the yeah. time I finished squeezing. Oh, <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back with George Fultz again. That, that'll be from uh, 8 o'clock till 11. It'll be uh, Glass Moving, Comzari, um Blackout Seance and it, it's um, a pendulum work it's a great great fun evening with uh, Sally and I tickets of that are £20 each spaces for that are very very limited it's written um, our tickets are a little of expensive size because we keep our audience sizes very very small because um, we want each event to be special for everyone who comes along so if you can come along to the George Vaults it's £20 or a bell from leamfieldentertainment.com or we got tickets.com slash leamfield and those are on sale now uh, and finally possibly um, a small event but it would be great fun for Christmas because what is Christmas without a ghost story um, if you'd like to oh yes you look scared again no oh, smiling it's all okay I'm oh, maybe okay. it's just your creepy smile um, on Tuesday, uh, <laughs> on Tuesday, eighteenth of December, so it's a week before Christmas Day, we will be doing the last Shadows of Rochester Ghost Walk of the year. Um, that's uh, Ghost Walk takes about eighty minutes. Um, we'll take you for a tour around all of the um, the great unsung ghost stories of Rochester. Um, stopping off at Eastgate House, uh, Rochester Castle, um, um, we're a trip through the vines at night, which is always really tense I think what 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 if it's good it won't be a turkey oh I made a Christmas turkey. you did that was good oh Christ that is if I'm not ill with tinselitis oh Christ <laughs> if anyone's out there who can actually exorcise Sally <laughs> that would be amazing no 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 depossess depossess depossess
deep as this. <laughs> um, so we've got some great events um, coming up. Hopefully we'll see you at some of them. So I'll run me through it again. That is the uh, Shadows of Rochester Ghost Walk. It's Tuesday, 18th of December. Tickets for that are £9 each and available from leeenfieldentertainment.com or wegottickets.com slash leeenfield. On Tuesday, the 29th of January, we'll be doing a full George Vault seance. Um, tickets for that are £20 each and available again from leeenfieldentertainment.com or wegottickets.com slash leeenfield. And then, of course, on Friday, the 1st of February, we've got the big one, the big cojones. We are doing the Black Horse in Plaquely for a late night ghost hunt and seance and dinner. Um, tickets for that are £40 each. They'll be on sale um, Friday this week. And they'll be available once again, leeenfieldentertainment.com or wegottickets.com slash leeenfield. Um, thanks very much for listening. This has been the Paranormal Cast. I'm Lee Enfield. And I'm Sally Morgan. Bye. Bye.